Yee day everyone and welcome back. My name is Nana Industry and today we're going to quickly run through most of the super ships that have just been added to the tech tree. I'm going to let you know what I think you should be picking up first. And well, we're going to kick things straight off the bat here with the Setsuma. Because you can do that to people. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was like 74,000 damage against the United States there. And obviously, just so you guys are aware, this footage has been recorded before the patch went live. Hence, uh, so the United States did not get its buffed, uh, what do you call it? Um, flight deck armor. So hence why we're able to still do that very easily. Anyhow, so doing things a little bit differently today and got a little bit of a compilation on the background. I'm not going to talk about the super carriers because A, I haven't played what the United States is like now after the buffs and well, I want you guys to um, hopefully take some of these ships into the next clan battle season which is obviously using super ships. So starting with this Satsuma here, it is a fantastic ship. Really, really has been a fantastic ship for me to be playing. These 510 millimeter guns, they're absolutely brutal. They've got fantastic range, great overmatch potential, and the fire directive uh, is really, really insane for when you want to absolutely annihilate somebody that is in a position or making a wrong move. This thing is really, really quite strong. If you manage to get a good broadside against somebody, if you manage to smack them right, um, you get the timing on your shots, you will do a huge amount of damage because these are the largest guns in the game from my memory. Now, I really, really like this ship and I do think the fire control directive, whatever it's called, the improved dispersion really makes this thing so special. And as you're going to see really quickly here, yeah, this Riga is probably going to find out why I think this is so powerful. Yeah, easy dev strikes with the Setsuma. This one, I, I really like this, but let's move on now to having a look at the Hanover. Now, the Hanover is an extension of the Parisian, which was added to the game recently. It's and what's the strength of this thing? Well, it's got 483mm caliber guns, obviously got the great overmatch, it's got a pretty decent reload, it's fire directive uh, upgrade, what that is, is it improves the secondary battery range, it's reload, and it's just a fantastic one for when you're wanting to brawl. This thing has got some really, really insane armor as well, and you really are quite durable in this ship. So I really do have been enjoying playing with this one as well. Although I have been playing the Satsuma a little bit more just because the Metron, at least here on the Asia server, dictates to playing a little bit better with that kind of ship. But the Hanover, this thing can be absolutely brutal. And whilst you don't have the improved dispersion um, with that fire control directive, if you do get good dispersion like this and Annapolis is about to find out, yeah, it can really, really hurt with this ship. And well, the tanking ability is pretty up there considering it's German. Moving on to probably one of the most powerful cruisers that we've got here is the Condor. Now, it's an extension of the Honry. However, it doesn't have many of the dis uh, downsides the Honry has. So it's got more guns than the Honry. It's got 12 of these uh, 240 millimeter guns, which are fantastic. They have fantastic range, good, um, decent reload. They have got, well, fantastic fire chance. And the AP really does quite hurt. Now, what's the fire, uh, what's the special ability of this ship? Well, it gets this insane little burst around here as can see and it not only does it improve your dispersion but yeah you can pump out so many shells so quickly now this thing like the honry also gets a main battery reload booster so what that means if you find somebody that's sitting flat broadside to you you have the ap loaded you pop you switch ammo yeah you can just imagine what's going to happen just like this annapolis is going to find out right here the improved dispersion with this um, fire directive is really really incredibly powerful and then Annapolis full health to 3k 
Talking about the Annapolis here, well, this is an extension of the Des Moines, and well, you can't really go wrong with a Des Moines in my opinion. Uh, what does it gain over the Des Moines? You get an extra, uh, a whole extra turret, so it's like having, say, a buffalo configuration, but stuck here at super ship tier, or tier 11, however you want to call it. You've got the fantastic radar that Des Moines has, you have uh, the hydro, same consumables as Des Moines. The main thing that you're getting is you're getting that um, extra turret. You also like the condo, you also get that uh, burst fire potential, and that can actually prove to be really quite handy in some situations. Because, like, well, having 12 of these guns, and unlike the Condor, you actually get to fire three full salvos in that burst compared to just the two from, that the Condor has. As this uh, Marceau is going to find out here, well, unfortunately for me, I was a bit of a potato shot uh, <laughs> trying to go after this Marceau, but you can just see in a second when I do pop it exactly how brutal all 12, all eight, sorry, all 12 of these guns when you got the burst firing. It is a lot of DACA, and if you can actually manage to uh, aim your shots well and you manage to score uh, lots of hits on whether it be an enemy destroyer or per setting perma fires against something, <laughs> battleship, it's quite brutal. And yeah, there's all the shots there. <laughs> it's just an absolute glorious stream of fire coming into him there, and we do get a fire on him. Now, Obviously, what do you get? having the extra turret compared to the Des Moines does prove to be really, really quite useful. Uh, we're engaging this enemy in Naples here, and well, just take a look at the amount of damage he's going to be able to pump into us, and that's just because he's got four turrets shooting at us instead of three. And if you thought the Des Moines with it uh, was bad, the reload it has, well, yeah, this has got the same reload as I was saying before, just with an extra turret, so you actually melt people super, super quickly. And as you can see, well, my health kind of just disappeared very, very quickly. And that was only from a few salvos from that Annapolis. Annapolis is actually uh, not too bad of a ship. Although, do I reckon it's the most powerful one out there? <sighs> Probably not. And well, there's another example of the burst fire there from the Annapolis. A lot of shells going there, but unfortunately, I'm a little bit of a potato. So, well, I can't aim my shots perfectly, can I? But if you do need to, oh, you're about to go down, for example, it is actually quite useful to try and maximize your little bit of damage here. As we can see, there's Richtoff and Torpedo Bombers coming in. Oh, I've got no more heals. I'm going to go down here. So I say, hey, try and fire off a couple more salvos. Try and maybe see if I can sneak a kill on that Annapolis. But let's just pop this burst fire and just try and maximize our damage. Get as many fires as we can against this FDG. And, well... We do manage to get off the full salvo, and well, you can just see all those shells streaking through the air into him. And yeah, that's an easy double fire against him. So, Annapolis, yeah, definitely uh, for those that really enjoy the Des Moines or the Salem. Moving on to the Zorky, which is, well, I guess you could probably say it's well, uh, very, very similar to what a pre nerf carver is like. It's got the same configuration as the Kabarosk, uh, four gun turrets, and I know this one does lead on from the Delny, but I'm going to have more of a comparison with the Kabu because that's just the way this ship kind of dictates itself. In terms of comparison to the Kabu, you've obviously got the fantastic 50mm plating along the side of this ship, which can actually shatter quite a fair few destroyer uh, shells and some cruiser shells, as long as you're careful. And what does this have as its special unique feature? Well, you have got the burst fire just like the Annapolis, just like the Condor. And that can actually be really, really quite useful when you're trying to either like burst down enemy destroyers or you've got an enemy battleship. He's just popped damage control. And well, you want to try and set some perma fires onto them. And as you can see there, all those shells, they're streaking towards that Jean Bard. And those hits are going to stack up really, really damn quickly. Fantastic ship, it's obviously incredibly, incredibly fast, and well, as you can see here, going after an enemy Hayato here, and well, he's not going to have too much of a fun time here. Yep, that was an easy 10,000 damage straight off a of Hayate at the start of the game. Zorki, if you love the Kaba, I highly recommend you probably look just like getting this one. Now, the Yamagiri is probably got the most tricks out of the in the bag out of all of the ships here. It not only has it got the ability to switch between two types of torpedoes, similar to, say, um, how submarines can do, it's also got the burst fire mechanic as well. And this one, obviously, being an extension of the Shimakaze, it's got 18 torpedoes compared to the 15 that Shimmer has. 
it really is a very very nice torpedo boat and it's got the exact same stealth position Mikazi. so your torpedoes they they really really do hurt you've either you've got an option to use the 12 km torpedoes and the 20 kilometers or you can use the 8 kilometers and the 20 kilometers i prefer to just stick with the 12 kilometers because they're the best ones overall although you can obviously uh switch between the torpedoes as it needed now the burst fire on this ship as well when you do manage to uh, utilize the that mechanic as well if you're going after enemy destroyers yeah it can actually be kind of brutal and as you can see here we found an enemy shimikaze so he's not going to enjoy this uh little engagement here decent amount of damage there um and obviously as you can see we got a few uh torpedo hits there unfortunately we didn't hit all of our shots against that shimikaze but hey now this scenario here a little bit later into the game we are trying to chase out the shimikaze because we've just been bursting him throughout trying to find where he is there he is and well all of these shells yeah, he goes down very very quickly and well this ship does have an improved main battery reload over the shimmer as well so if you do enjoy, enjoy the shimmer uh gameplay but want a few upgrades with the gun reload torpedoes yeah this is the ship for you now which are my top three super ships i recommend people get well ones that can absolutely do this to people from pretty much far far away so the satsuma absolutely goes on my list as one of the top ones another my another top one is going to be the condo for it's just insane potential to do this to people as well plus it's insane flexibility to move around the map yeah this thing is really really powerful and my final super ship choice that i highly recommend people would uh, look to grab first well that's going to be the hanover just because of it's got fantastic tanking ability its guns are really quite powerful and well who doesn't love some great secondary action anyways i hope you guys enjoyed this one and i'll catch you guys next time